Okay, guys, Reverend Whitehead said he's sick with the church and how they conduct their business and treat people. He's just sick of it. They're coming after him. He says it's orchestrated and he's speaking out about the church. Here's what he have to say. We, we, what are we really doing? You had time to get there. So now all of a sudden, I'm working for the devil because I don't want to sit under the holy grail with you. That took you about 50 years to get there or 20 years to get there. And guess what? Hold on, hold on. I'm only in this. I'm just finding God out these last three to six months, this last year to two, right? You had 20 years to mess up, get back, mess up, get back. So now you in a groove and now I'm bad because I'm not in the same groove. So guys, he's talking about all his brother, uh, pastors who are hard on him, like Kurt Franklin and Larry Reed. Like, like where, where are we going, church? We, we, what are we really doing? What are we really doing? What are we really doing? Do we really love God? Or do we really like to control people by telling people we love God, but yet we try to control them? That's why there's no young, real people in church. That's why the only young people that are in church consistently are the ones that are made to go to church. And then we have the young men and the young women that are wrestling with their, with their, uh, with their gender. So therefore, the only safe place is church. Like, I'm just keeping it real, y'all. I, I ain't got nothing against nobody, what they want to do. But let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it all the way real. I got people in my church that used to be homosexual and and and, and, and they changed their life back to the right way. And I got people there that I know is still homosexual. I don't browbeat them, right? But they come for Jesus. That's all that matters. But let's talk about the young men and the young women that are all sleeping with each other in the church. But yet, soon as they get in the pulpit, they singing like an angel or preaching like an anointed machine. But nobody ain't trying to correct them. So we'd rather allow them to stay incorrect just to control them. What? is the purpose what's the purpose what's the purpose i'm just talking about church whatever you choose to do with your life that's what you choose to do with your life but in the church there should be some order you ain't gotta like me you ain't gotta like me you ain't gotta love me as long as i'm doing the right thing by god i'm all right it's so easy Y'all, and I'm going to close out on this. It's so easy to yell from the bleachers. But when you're on the field and you're playing, it's a different type of feel. Somebody said, I feel like they don't even consider your church a part of the kingdom. Why? That's your, that's your opinion. They didn't accept Jesus. The Bible said they rejected the cornerstone. Yeah, listen, I'm a Bible scholar, right? Don't play with me. Please don't play with me. The Bible says they rejected the cornerstone. The, um, the, the cornerstone. That's what the Bible says. They rejected Jesus. So they can reject me and they can reject my church. They rejected God, smarty. Well, why isn't your church uh, uh, accepted? It doesn't have to be. How about that? They didn't accept Jesus. The Bible said, the Bible said, and when Lazarus died, the, the homeless man, Lazarus died, and the rich man died. The Bible says that Lazarus was on one side in Abraham's bosom and the rich man that didn't do anything for him when he was on earth was in hell. And he says, look, can you dip your finger in, the, in water and put it on the tip of my tongue? And he says, and can you go tell my brother what you see? He says, he said to them, he said, they won't even believe him. They won't even believe it because they, they wouldn't even believe if God was in their face. So don't sit here and talk about my church is not accepted. You don't think my, why my church is not accepted? It don't have to be accepted. They ain't accept Jesus Christ. So I don't look to be accepted. Yeah, y'all, they can call me the black sheep. They can call me whatever they want to call me. But guess what? They're going to say I'm anointed. That they will say. That they will say. So I don't care what they say. Let me think of, let me tell y'all something about Calvary, y'all. 
want to say something about Calvary before this thing cut off. Let me, let, me, let me just talk about Calvary, right? The Bible teaches us very clearly. On the Sunday before the uh, crucifixion of God, Jesus, right? On that Sunday was Palm Sunday, where Jesus came in on a donkey. Why did Jesus come in on a donkey? Somebody say different. I need y'all to get this understanding that Jesus came on a donkey to represent different. He did not want to meet the status quo of what the um, what the Jews were looking for. They were looking for a Messiah like David, the king of the Jews. They was looking for a Messiah that came in on a horse and chariot. But God said, Jesus says, I'm going to switch the game up and say I could save the world coming in on a donkey. So let me explain something to you about Bishop Whitehead. I can wear this red hoodie. I can wear this red hat. I can drive what I want to drive. I can move how I want to move. And just because I don't look like what y'all think uh, a man of God is supposed to look like, it doesn't matter because my Jesus came in on a donkey. But watch this, y'all. And when he came in on a donkey, everybody heard that he rose Lazarus from the dead. Not the same Lazarus that I just got through talking about, but we talking about Lazarus, Mary, Martha, brother. And everybody heard about him. And now he was doing so many signs and wonders. Watch this. And they said, man, he got to be the Messiah. So as he came in on a donkey, not a horse, as he came in as Jesus, not David, as he came in, came in as the Messiah, not the devil, because they called him Belzebub, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Zealots, the whole Sahedrins called him Belzebub. They said he has to worship another another God. He can't be, he can't be uh, of the son of God. And they went on and on, but he came in on a donkey. And they said, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the king on that Sunday. And then that Thursday, they beat him all night long. I need y'all to get this understanding. So you have to understand that I understand that I have to be beaten because my Jesus was beaten. And they're going to beat me all night long. The Bible says in Acts chapter 9, verse 14 and 15, he says, he says, for, uh, he says, he says, uh, for he must suffer for my name's sake because he is going to lead the he said he's going to lead the Gentiles, the kings, and the children of Israel. But he must understand he's going to suffer. That's when God was talking about Saul before he became Paul. So suffering is a requirement. So therefore, we can become the antidote and become the answer of what God needs us to speak. You see, you can't carry the answer unless you believe the answer from God. So watch this. So they beat him all night long. Holy Thursday, they beat him. Good Friday, they beat him all night long all the way up to Good Friday. But they made him carry his cross. See, I need y'all to get this understanding. They made him carry his cross. And the same ones on Sunday that said, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the king. He's the Messiah, spit in his face and said, crucify him. It wasn't even seven days before they said crucify him. It was only four. They beat him. And watch this. All of his disciples ran. So y'all think... That I'm shaking or shifting because the leaders of my church, the ones that wanted to resign, resigned. They had to resign. The disciples did. And then as they beat him all night long, he was so weak, didn't get no sleep. And he carried his cross, but he was so weak, he fell. Watch this. And a man that didn't even know him helped him. And he never even named the man. I need y'all to get this understanding that there's some people that's not even going to know you that's going to help you. When the disciples walked with him for the three years of his ministry and they seen the miracle signs and wonders, they all ran. So why in the world should I complain about what I'm going through? I'm going to talk about what I'm going through because... People need to understand what I'm going through. So therefore, they can relate and say, if Bishop Whitehead can do it, I can do it. I'm not complaining. I'm upset, but I'm not mad. It's a difference. Upset means I'm hurting. Why do I got to go through this? Mad means I'm vengeful. And I want to be vindictive. But it was on Good Friday that he got up. And the Bible says in 2 Peter that he went down to hell. And took the keys from the prisoners in hell. And he got up with all power. So y'all really think I care about what these people talking about? I'm just documenting my testimony. 
And I'm not afraid to document my testimony. I'm not afraid to go on live. And soon as people see me, I might irritate some people. Some people are like, oh, what is he saying now? I'm documenting my testimony. And I want y'all to understand that I don't shake, I shift. And I want to close out with this. Stand. Don't be afraid. Stand on the faith that you have for God. Trust and believe. People will leave you. They have to go. In order for God to do the great work that he has for you. And yes, it's going to hurt. Yes, it's going to sting. Yes, it's going to cause some type of pain. It might leave a mark. But stand. And to the church that's hurting people. You got to answer for it. You have to answer for it. So, guys, you heard what Bishop Whitehead had to say. He's sick and tired of the church. All the um, hypocrisy that goes on. Half of these uh, preachers, ministers, leaders in the church are homosexuals. The women are with women. The men are with men. They are raping. They are molesting. They are fornicating. They are just bringing people into their nastiness, coercion. And he's sick and tired of it. And now he says they're trying to stifle him because while he was doing this live, one of the preachers called him and said, zip it, put a lid on it, don't say nothing. And he blocked the person because he said, how dare you call me to tell me not to say nothing. As a matter of fact, I got a lot more to say. So this is what's going on, folks. These preachers are at odds with each other. They are fighting, in-house fighting amongst themselves. And by fighting amongst themselves, they are just shedding light and lighting up the wrongs of the church. So I maintain it's God's doing. In order for me to get an insight as to what's going on within the church, with all these ministers, preachers, bishops, um, leaders in the church, they've, they have got to be at odds with each other. They have got to not get along. They have got to go after each other. And the only way they can do that is if God intervene for them to go after each other, throw each other under the bus in order for us to know what's going on in the church. Because... This has been going on for a long time in the black churches where these preachers have been taking advantage of the parishioners and everybody, all the ministers zip their lips when they know of all the wrongdoings that a lot of them are homosexuals and they are fornicating, they are raping these kids, they are passing on diseases, they're going from city to city when they go on these road trips and these excursions preaching and they are raping kids, young boys and young girls all along the way, they are leaving their mark. And it's about time that we find out what's going on. And the only way that it was possible for us to find out is if they are, are at odds with each other. And right now they are at odds with each other. Half of them are not talking to the other half. And they're polarized. And this is the only way that we got a little glimpse as to the wrongdoings of the church. Not only Larry Reed and Whitehead, but a lot of other ministers, preachers, bishops are guilty of wrongdoings. And so I'm thankful that all this is coming out. Anyway, YouTubers, drop your comments. Let me know what you think. I'm over and out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and to this video. Thank you for watching.